After Achilles' funeral, the goddess Thetis, the hero's mother, offered her son's armor to the Achaeans. It was to be given to the one who had rendered the greatest assistance to Peleus and Thetis' son. Ajax considered himself the only man worthy of such honor, for it was he who had taken the hero's body from the grip of the Trojan warriors. But Odysseus objected and said that he himself was the one who deserved to inherit Achilles' breastplate. Ajax was furious with Odysseus. He claimed that the comparison between the two was preposterous, as it would be the same as equating a dog to a lion. The giant also said that, if it were not for him, Achilles would have his head on a stake, and his spirit would roam the banks of the river Acheron. But Odysseus replied by saying that, if it were not for him, who contained nearly a dozen Trojans, Ajax would never be able to carry the body, and that it was he who found Achilles and convinced him to fight. Without that, the entire Greek expedition would have been lost. Old Nestor suggested a competition to decide who was most worthy of such an honor. Ajax and Odysseus spoke before everyone, defending their causes. Ajax was brave and worthy, but he did not possess the power of speech. But Odysseus had a silver tongue and charmed everyone with his words. Menelaus and Agamemnon convinced the council to give Odysseus their weapons. Some did so to prevent Ajax from getting even more prestige and power. Upon seeing Odysseus being presented with Hephaestus' divine armor, Ajax's blood boiled to such an extent that he felt ill, even having a stroke. He became motionless in front of everyone and had facial paralysis. In his tent, he seemed to recover from his malaise, but he was still outraged at the humiliation he had suffered. He wanted to make the Atridae pay for conspiring against him. At that moment, the goddess Athena appeared behind him and clouded his judgment. Ajax was completely beside himself. He came out of the tent with his weapon, determined to take revenge. Two of Agamemnon's guards tried to stop him but failed. He suddenly saw Atreus' two sons, who seemed startled to see Ajax's hateful face. The giant lunged forward with bloodlust against Menelaus and Agamemnon. Ajax mortally struck Menelaus. Then he strangled Agamemnon until he took away his last breath of life. Even after killing the two sons of Atreus, Ajax's thirst for revenge remained unquenchable. He went to Odysseus's tent and dragged him out. His opponent would not die as quickly as the others. He tied him to a rock and began to whip him. That's when the Athena-induced confusion dissipated, and Ajax realized that he was flogging a ram. And everyone witnessed the grotesque scene in shock. As he killed the other lambs, he thought the animals were Menelaus and Agamemnon, for he shouted their names during the slaughter. Again humiliated before everyone, he ran back to his tent. He called his slave Tecmessa, whom he had taken as his wife, and he said that he could not stand the humiliation, so he would depart from the world. His wife and son would have to seek out Teucer, his brother, so that the Greek leaders would not enslave them. Ajax held a sword against his chest and threw himself to the ground against it. The war's second greatest warrior, second only to Achilles, died. Agamemnon wanted to deny him the right to the funeral because he had betrayed everyone, and that had it not been for Athena confounding him, Ajax would have killed him, plus his brother. But Odysseus convinced the supreme leader to bury the hero with all the honors of a great fighter. Had it not been for Ajax and his great shield, the Trojans would have burned all the Greek ships. Thanks to the intervention of the king of Ithaca, the mighty Ajax was veiled and honored as a great warrior.